book review on video. This time, Lost Rituals by Irsa Sigurdardottir. Uh, this is a book that I never heard about uh, before it popped out at a book crossing meetup here in Oslo. Uh, one of the other book crossers, she brought it and she totally raved about it. Uh, and I was interested immediately because uh, I really like reading various fiction from the other Nordic countries and when it comes to Iceland I haven't read a lot of Icelandic literature uh, or I've read very little to be honest but what I have read is uh, Arnaldur Indridason, his uh, crime uh, mysteries and I think they are wonderful partly because he's a great writer but also because of the setting which to me is very exotic uh, so when another uh, Icelandic uh, thriller writer popped up I just immediately I grabbed the book and I had to try it and I have to say that it totally lived up to my expectations. It's, uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful book. Uh, it was published in, let's see, uh, 2005 in Icelandic. This Norwegian edition is from 2006. And it was published in English uh, about a year ago, in January 2009. Uh, the original title has been translated directly into Norwegian. The third sign for the English title is Last Rituals. Uh, it's the... Uh, a kind of complicated story. It um, uh, our heroine uh, is a young lawyer or youngish. She is the mother of a teenage son, so she's not that young, but she's uh, young enough to perhaps be considered not exactly the peak of her profession. Uh, she is a lawyer. She works uh, basically with uh, uh, business law. So she's surprised when she's approached by. A totally random person that she's never heard of in her entire life, a German person um, who wants her to basically investigate a murder. Uh, she's heard about the murder, it is that of a young history student, uh, a young man from Germany, who has come to Iceland to study at the University of Reykjavik, uh, which is the wonderful university uh, for Nordic history and uh, medieval history. Um, has amazing resources and it's very international, lots of uh, students from all over there. So uh, it's natural that he should come there considering his interests, but he has been murdered in a really creepy way, a ritualistic murder, um, yeah, really bad business. Uh, Thora, our heroine, Thora Gudmundsdottir, uh, she's heard of it because it's been in the news, but obviously it's nothing to do with her. Um, Again, she's in business law, she has nothing to do with any criminal cases. Uh, but this man, uh, a German person, who has a really weird name, Matthew, uh, I really wonder why she's chosen that name. That was the one thing that jarred for me in this book, that the German person, German man, who has come from basically, uh, apparently born in Germany, raised in Germany, lived his whole life in Germany, totally German, his name is Matthew Reich. Reich, okay, but Matthew, where does that come from? Uh, I don't buy the name, so that was the one thing that uh, annoyed me about this book. Why couldn't she come up with our actual German name? It's just like this one little detail that annoyed me in the book. But anyway, he wants her uh, to help him uh, look into this murder. Uh, he is uh, in the employ of this young man, the murder victim's family. Um, they are apparently incredibly rich. I mean, they are like rolling in it. Uh, and they're willing to pay her a ridiculous sum to help him uh, with his investigation. Uh, and of course, she is always in need of money. She is a single mother to two children. One a teenage son, another a younger girl. Uh, and she's divorced and she's had to really change her lifestyle uh, to uh, be able to keep the house, which is uh, her children's childhood home. She doesn't want to move, but she's had to really, really change um, the lifestyle that she's been used to and since she's no longer able to rely on her husband's doctor's salary since he's left her for a younger woman. Um, so she's tempted by the money and she's a bit tempted by the case too because normally it's something she would never have anything to do with so it might be interesting. Uh, and they start investigating. Matthew at first says that is because he's a foreigner, he doesn't speak Icelandic, so he needs like a liaison to help him, who, someone who can get along with the police and who can just keep up with everything and who can make sure that they get the information, i.e. the family gets the information that's necessary. But as they dig into it, 
the whole thing becomes really weird and really creepy. This uh, young man, the victim, he seems to not have been a victim in most uh, situations in his life. He seems, in fact, to have had a lot of shit going on uh, that's been um, perhaps not illegal necessarily, but certainly in the borderline zones of legality. Uh, he's had a circle of friends that he has dominated tremendously. He's been interested in the black arts, in torture, in witchcraft. And uh, uh, Thora, she discovers that there is a lot going on in her peaceful little country that she doesn't know about. And they do eventually come to the bottom of the murder mystery and some other mysteries uh, surrounding it, but it's a... Uh, it's a dangerous process and certainly um, a lot more than thought out bargained for. And in the background, her private life is going on with uh, the problems that come with having a teenage son. I'm not going to go into that, but uh, things do come up. Uh, and also her relationship with her ex-husband, which isn't perhaps the best. And uh, I really, I love the setting for this book. Again, Iceland, exotic to me. Uh, and also uh, great characters. There's a lot of what I <laughs> sort of assume that Iceland is like, that it's, uh, it's uh, not that different from Norway, but it's more like the whole country is uh, like uh, our village life with uh, weird characters and whatnot. And I know that's not true. They have a wonderful city uh, with really uh, high-tech life, or they had before their economy crashed, but uh, you know, as a Norwegian, I do tend to have some prejudice uh, against the Icelanders. Uh, but uh, I really, I love the characters in this book. Uh, the interplay between Thora and Matthew is wonderful. Uh, he's a great character, she's a wonderful character. She's also um, the main character of the, the next two books by this author, which I will so definitely read, because this was a great read. A thrilling plot, I could hardly put it down. Very well written. Um, a great contrast between and the personal side and this really creepy murder mystery that's uh, being unraveled. As it says here, uh, the blurb here, a promising debut. And I have to say, it's, it's extremely promising. Uh, in fact, it's so impressive that I'm almost surprised that it was a debut novel because this is a great read. A uh, wonderful setting, wonderful characters, an absolutely thrilling plot, great writing, there's really hardly anything except the name of the German that I can say that is negative about this book. So uh, keep an eye out for this writer, Irsa Sigurdardottir. Uh, her first novel, Last Rituals. An excellent read. Uh, kind of scary. But uh, most things turn out well in the end, at least for the good guys.